Good evening to all. So let me pray the Almighty. We pray with the, this sort of situation, event. So, Tondisayal, in Padam Tolal, Pandisayal, or the Ro, the Ro, a Perisadi in Kandisayal, or Kaidavamo, Saydavamo, Mundisayalam, Poruke, and Andre, very candy. I think we are assembled here to commemorate all the services rendered by the legendary. The founder, Professor of Community Medicine, Nandi sir. So actually, by definition, it's a tundan. It's a tundan, Sivanyana Sundra. Lord Shiva also famous for service. He traveled in the bull, the symbol of service, Dharma. So Dharma support existence. So since 1978, he joined the, at the time he joined the Faculty of Medicine as the founder, professor and the pioneer. Since that time, he has been rendering marvelous service and laid the foundation for this faculty to thrive. Actually, he graduated from University of Columbia in 1955. So as a mature doctor, academician, researcher, a who man, the United Nation of Health branch, he represented all over the world. And this accumulated experience, he joined the Japan University in the, at the time of 1978, when it became a full-blown university. So Japna had a strong tradition, like a velu uh, of pioneering medical education in this country or in South Asia. So we didn't have any problem in finding resources. I used to take lunch with uh, Nandi sir and another legendary figure, the forensic medicine. Uh, all we had uh, the lunch time sitting together with the professor Ganeshali. So since that time, uh, till his departure, I was able to, uh, I had a fortune to be associated with family, children, and one of his daughter was a computer science student, and others catered uh, in the India for the allied health sciences. And they, all three daughters also now, with us and their family members are uh, also is a sign of uh, uh, his association and the work because we uh, see somebody by their associates. So what he left for us also is continue to serve. So in that sense, uh, all you know Nandi, uh, he's a complete personality. He served in touch with the kindergarten people. He begins his liberty with Papa Padu. That level he approached. Amma, he wrote a book, I read. Amma. So that means uh, when we enter the world, he is the first uh, person we meet Amma, then he wrote a book about Amma. Then he wrote a book about, he gave me the novel. Nambike, then the professorial medical examination, medical student phase, the final uh, come down after the professorial before graduation. Then he said the problem he had with the medical faculties and all sort of mental speculation and all this, then we put in a novel, it's called Nambike. So, contributed to literary circles. Then the famous Raja gave his name, Nandi. Uh, then finally, not only his contribution, actually, in relation to uh, medical faculty, founder, professor, and committee, then the third dean of the faculty, 
then uh, he was in the council for a number of years still in the university and then he has been recruiting all the people the process babal was in the arasatnam and he prepared the second generation and he famous for research and his research books are uh, the standard textbook in the entire sri lankan curriculum and the academic um, institution and then then he joined hand with the 1990 with the professor thururaja at the time we were struggling to hold everything intact because of the challenges we faced then at the time he organized uh, japna science association even japna science association emblem is his design one of the beautiful emblem then he served as a president then never endless episode is undu seyadan in palam thalaga pandu seyadan ularu ularu apersaniyam kandu seyada kaitavamo he is a divine personality then he went on to give education then the education also moral education he called it sai education he rendered service to sai education in the country in the moral build up so that was a thing we were lacking now we talk about that in all the sectors vedic sedic sedic and accountability and transparency and and it is now i think i am blessed to, I think Madam uh, resurrected with the Dean Balakumar this uh, auditorium after many many years. Even last month I have been here uh, witnessing uh, James Entrance Day. No, that time is a difficult time. So after 1995, the band was across the uh, medical faculty. So medical faculty out of the mainstream of uh, location. So here there is six or seven years. He spent in Sandagrad. At the time, he was the president of MSU, and uh, as a senior staff counsel, I worked with him. Even today, he was as the dean and the vice chancellor. We have been working with him. So that uh, I am cherishing his association, association with him from nineteen uh, uh, mid nineties. I think it goes uh, more than thirty years now, and. Uh, Uh, then he got his master of science from the university of colombo in the comet medicine in 2006 and also postgraduate in the institute of agriculture university of delhi got uh, postgraduate diploma in applied statistics as a comet medicine man is a big tool he he, he has to use all his uh, professional uh, career so, and then he got postgraduate in institute of medicine as a community medicine consultant md in 2010 so Pro dr rajendra swendrakwan is a senior lecturer now and head of the department of uh, for forensic medicine for a while before he became a dean of the faculty of medicine he is a public health researcher and common non communicable disease epidemiologist with a special interest in the social determinants of health and cause affecting care of the people with chronic diseases especially in aging population and palliative migration uh, palliative care the doctor sister kumar has led uh, projects extending nutrition child care adolescence problem mitigation care of elders the health services research and chronic diseases Uh, epidemiology and served as a principal investigator and consultant in, for numerous cross-sectional studies and surveys in regional and national, international level. Uh, then uh, those uh, things are actually we put in the book and the back side of the book. Um, so Surendra Kumar is a country led uh, for a global health um, atrial. fibrillation study group is worth of 60 million uh, rupees and he has been employing around 60 for research uh, for this project it goes many years is commenced already with the uh, may collaboration from university of birmingham uk funded by the national institute of health research uk and also uh, he is a uh, uh, a head uh, world bank funded project for water security in the northern province sri lanka and also principal investigator of the collaborative study with uh, 
Singhelton, Osio Fajir, Perma Ligand License among patient at the teaching hospital Jaffna. He's also co investigator and supervisor of many research activities which have regional interests. And Srinu Kumar has worked as a consultant for numerous government and international agencies, including Save the Children, UNDP, and currently managerial coordinator of the Jaffna Health City Project supported by Ku Sri Lanka. He's worked with the Minister of Health, Northern Province, Sri Lanka, on developing and implementing strategic management plan for the Northern Province. And also, he's also helping with the implementation of career cancer control service and palliative care service in the province with the support of the Cancer Control Program, Sri Lanka, and Cancer Care, Manitoba, Canada. So, Srinu Kumar, in the academic side, has uh, uh, published more than 30 academic peer reviewed articles, and also he has given 30, more than 30 guest lectures in the regional and national international forums. And also, he also authored more than 10 textbooks in Tamil and English on public health. At present, uh, he is the dean of the faculty and he shoulders many responsibilities. At present, Srinu Kumar is the president of the Sri Lanka Public Health. Education Institution Network, an executive committee member of the Southeast Asian Public Health Education Institution Network, and also advisory committee member of the Global Network of the Academy of Public Health. He also holds this is Public Health Award for 2021. In addition, his numerous academic commitments, including as well as the honorary medical superintendent of the Kokani Hospital Mulai. Actually, he is from Sulipuram. I wrote I read this article, one of the magazine, uh, Kiramatan Patanam Muna. So, from Sulipuram, uh, he moved to Japna Hindu College for this final thing that wrote in the magazine. So, he very much attached to his uh, uh, place of uh, this uh, Sulipuram and Mula. There, he the referred to this Mula Hospital Manual and recently opened up other facilities, and also the president and the Institute of Medical Science Trust, Mani Bhai, and also President of Health Trust, Jaffna, President Jaffna Social Action Center. He's also a member of the several regional, national, professional association and organization, and actively engaged with the support of the active of various community organizations. More than that, our uh, COVID focal point for last two years, and he has been uh, actually he has been representing us in the Jaffna University in all the contact points. We had a lot of issues, so I don't know how he find time. Whether he has 24 hours, more than that, uh, he's an unbelievable guy, and we are blessed to have him as the oration today. Have his oration today. Title: uh, This uh, oration title. Um, uh, this healthcare on um, community healthcare, community based medical education, prospects and challenges. So, I cordially welcome him to deliver this address. To... Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for the kind introduction. The Vice Chancellor, University of Yatna, Professor S. V. Saknaraja, the council members of the University of Yatna, professors, teachers, Family members of uh, Professor Sinjimana Sunyan Sutram, well wishers, friends, and students in high pride, small, is physically, and on via Zoom. I am very fortunate and delighted to deliver the Professor Sinjimana Sundram oration 2022 on community based medical education prospects and challenges. My association with Professor Svinyana Sundram is a memorable one. I was fortunate to be the student and had the privilege to working with him for a year as a junior lecturer at the Department of Community Medicine in 2004. He guided me to start my teaching and research career. An important lesson I learned from Professor Svinyana Sundram was how to make use the limited resources in an innovative way. 
we embark on research on the prevalence of cancer in the Yafna district. Preparing and executing the study was an excellent learning experience for a newly recruited young academic. I also recall his passion for teaching. It was a wonderful learning experience to plan our academic activities together. He always encouraged us to think outside the box and to come up with innovative solutions for the challenges we face in academic career. Professor Vijayana Sundram, lovingly known as Nanti, was one of the best public health specialists in the country, an outstanding scientist and an eminent writer. Professor Vijayana Sundram was above all the Himani teacher who left a permanent mark on the lives of the students. We were indeed fortunate that he moved in 1978 from the University of Peradeniya to the newly established public, public faculty of medicine, University of Jaffna as founder professor of community medicine. His contribution to the faculty of medicine is immeasurable. His contribution to research and especially his book, Learning Research, is widely accepted across the country as an excellent guide for the medical students and health professionals. His contribution in Tamil literature and drama is remarkable. His writings on public health and health-related issues convey important health messages to the general public in an innovative manner with a profound impact. He also worked with WHO as a consultant. His colleagues at WHO still recall and talk extensively about the multifaceted and in-depth knowledge of public health. In my opinion, however, his greatest contribution was to community-based medical education. In the country, also in the in general country in general, and also the northern in particular. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us honor and remember of Sundram for his tremendous contribution to community-based medical education, an element that remains strong in the medical curriculum to this day, thanks for his legacy. For today, my talk, I have chosen this topic, community-based medical education, a timely topic given the, the health crisis we find ourselves in today. I will highlight recent development in health and healthcare, taking globally and in Sri Lanka. I will also touch and some new concepts in developing medical education and will explore the possibilities and challenges for the implementation of such innovative concepts in the present medical curricula, especially in community-based medical education. It is include that a great pleasure for me to talk in on a subject that fascinated Prof. Sunyana Sundaram on this day, which is his 94th birthday. Before I begin my presentation on community-based medical education, it's relevant today. I will first lay out the health challenges we face today 
globally as well as in the country. When we look at these challenges that we face globally, there has been a steady improvement in health status of the population globally. A study carried out by the Lancet NCDA Poverty Commission to assess the global burden of diseases found an increase in global life expectancy and birth health life, ex life expectancy at birth and health life expectancy and decrease in estimated number of deaths among children under five years. It is further observed that falling age standardized disability adjusted life years since 1990 has been at largest for communicable material, neurological and neurological diseases. Despite these achievements, we all are aware the devastating effects of the previously unknown virus has shown the inadequacy of existing health system, demanding states and the global community more broadly to command more to global health than ever before. Apart from these infectious, various types of transmission are going on. The epidemiological transmission creates the double burden of diseases that communicable and the non-communicable, that infectious and chronic diseases. And also the transition such as demographic and socioeconomic that made this world make the world age. The socioeconomic transmission, the population from this world will reach in urban areas, more than a half the population. So urban livelihood have caused changes in food prevalence, engagement in activities. The urbanites should think of how they, their city should effectively deal with health in terms of the previous of provision of required services and facilities for healthy lifestyles, physical and build any healthy environment for the future, which influence people's food consumption, behavior pattern, and engagement in physical activities. For example, manual and physical labor is being replaced with a sedentary life office work. And also globally, the NCDs such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, and chronic respiratory diseases account for the over 70 percentage of deaths. Three quarters of NCD deaths occur in low and middle income countries, but nearly 85 percentage of global premature deaths below 70 years from NCDs are reported in these countries. NCDs tend to be a long duration. The important characteristics of NCDs include incidents, insidious onset, and then chronic clinical manifestation and long-term disability in the face of poor control. So the natural history of NCDs, most patients with NCDs are distinguished in later stage that uh, after onset of symptom and also the time of diagnosis is delayed. So to handle the epidemic of NCDs require different approaches than for maternal and child health and infectious disease, which is we are familiar to handle. According to the WHO's global action plan for the prevention of control of non-communicable diseases, comprehensive care for non-communicable disease encompasses primary prevention, early detection, screening, and treatment or secondary prevention, rehabilitation, palliative care, and attention and improvement of mental health as priority for social development of investment in people. 
So if you want to address all these challenges, the key thing is we should be able to ensure the delivery of universal health. So we will look at what is universal health. All individuals and communities receive the health services they need without suffering financial hardships. It includes the full spectrum of essential quality health service from health promotion to prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and palliative care across the life course. Achieving UHC primarily depends on people-centered primary health care, all the more important in the context of rising rates of NCDs affecting high income and low middle income. Like, in other words, to be effective health system must be rooted in the community they serve and they able to not just prevent and treat NCD, but also improve well-being and quality of life. So healthcare delivery and the component of health workers and care workers with an optimal skill mix at facility, outreach and community level, and they should be equitable distributed. At present, the maldistribution of healthcare workers this disadvantages rural populations, it really affecting the implementation of universal health care. One of the most apparent lessons the pandemic has taught us the consequences of ne neglecting our health system. We have to live with the SARS-CoV-2 virus and further animal human transmissions of diseases of pandemic proportions are to be expected. There is a global need to strengthen public health services in to handle pandemics efficiently. The Lancet Commission on Social Determinants emphasizes that focus on healthcare alone will not help for future progress. There is a need to address the social determinant of health including the quality of education, economic growth, gender equality, and migration. So all these things when happening, the Sri Lanka is no exception. So Sri Lanka is the country in the region is also undergo rapid transition of this. When we look at this uh, right side of this pyramid, the showing, the population permit of Sri Lanka is aging steadily and will reach its peak in 2041. The transition will lead to an increase in the dependent population with many commodities. In fact, Sri Lanka is the fastest aging population in South Asia. So NCDs are also rising with this aging population. The NCDs are estimated to account for 75% of total deaths in Sri Lanka, with nearly one in five people die prematurely from NCDs. While we are facing all these challenges, so what is happening with our health system and related issues? So WHO again reminds us that countries must work together and ensure involvement of the whole government and not just the health sector to maintain the health of the people. So it's not the bus only business of the health sector. It's a business of the world governance and the people. So building robust health system encompasses providing the full spectrum of promotive, preventive, resuscitative, curative, rehabilitation, and palliative services. So studying the health system should be based on primary health care with a good balance between public health service and medical care. So countries should focus on providing quality and res responsive people-centered primary health care with good referral backup. 
There are wide variations within and between countries in the provision of healthcare in service. WHO with the World Bank group identified five fundamental elements to deliver quality of healthcare service. The healthcare workers, healthcare facilities, medicine, devices, and other techniques, information system, and financing. They em emphasize that governments, policy makers, health system leaders, patients, and clinicians should work together to ensure a high quality health workforce, ensure excellence across all the healthcare facilities, ensure safe and effective use of medicine, devices, and other technologies. And also ensure effective use of health information system, develop financing mechanism that support continuous quality improvement. If you want to deliver this healthcare system that has identified, it is very important to provide good healthcare workforce, which has a adequate skill and knowledge. The medical education and the healthcare system, the curriculum need to be reformed. The core of the discussion taking place within medical education circles relevant to my topic revolves around the relative emphasis on scientific knowledge and biological understanding of health illness versus social and humanities characteristics in medical curricula. So these are, these are the things, attributes that we are expecting from a good doctor, whether our curriculums are really addressing these things. The first ever report on medical education submitted by Abraham Flexner, an American educator in 1910, proposed the model of medical education that prevailed during the first half of the 20th century, which primarily focused on evidence science-based curricula. That's with most of the time still some of the schools are following. However, 15 years after his report, Flexner realized that the medical curriculum he introduced was a compromise in that it gave proceedings to the scientific aspects of medicine rather than its social and humanistic elements. In the mid of 20th century, the problem-based medical curriculum was introduced by McMaster University, Canada, and soon became popular to be adopted by medical schools across the world. The Lancet appointed an independent commission in 2010 to produce a report on education of health professionals for the 21st century, suggested adopting a system-based curriculum to improve the performance of health system by adapting core professional competencies to specific contexts while drawing in global knowledge. But when we look at this medical education in the region, the professional medical education has not kept pace with the challenges faced largely because of fragmented, outdated, and static curricula that produce graduates who are ill-equipped to provide the expected services. The problem are systematic, systemic mismatch of competencies to patient and population needs. Poor teamwork, persistent gender stratification within the profession, a narrow technical focus without broader contextual understanding, episodic encounters rather than continuous care. Predominant hospital oriented at the expenses of primary care, 
quantitative and qualitative imbalance in the professional labor market and weak leadership in improving health system performance, health system performance. The WHO has promoted social accountability of medical schools since 1995 through this World Federation of Medical Education suggested that have an obligation to direct their education, research and service activities toward addressing the priority health concerns of the community, region and our nation they serve. The WHO report on role of medical education in addressing the current health challenges, a report of regional meetings of South, Southeast Asian region highlighted the wide variation within the between countries, the extent to which the identified health challenges in a specific context were incorporated into the undergraduate medical curriculum. And the way they were introduced, taught and learned according to WHO medical schools with a conventional medical or discipline oriented curriculum tend to cover these challenges in preventive and social medicine towards the end of the course. Only few countries implement integrated medical curricula without departmental boundaries incorporating the identified health, health challenges throughout their curricula. Starting from year one to the final year, all the problem-based learning in practice at different levels in several medical schools, it is wide application has yet to be gained momentum. In this background of delivery of medical education, now I'm moving to this community-based medical education. Several innovative educational approaches, medical education have evolved and been experimented with over the years to keep up with the rapidly changing societal healthcare needs and demand. Among them, community-based medical education stands out as an innovative approach that is particularly suitable for low resource settings. Community-based education refers to educate, learn in a community setting by providing opportunities for students to learn their professional competencies in a community setting. Community-based education ultimately helps students to build a sense of connection with their communities. This kind of approach is appropriate for all educational forms and all age groups, especially adults. So defining community and also complex and also beyond the, beyond the scope of my talk. However, community need medical practitioners who are able to deliver a range of medical services in widely different hospitals and community settings from urban areas to remote villages. So it is especially important that the students are trained to deliver primary health care. They must learn to engage in a meaningful way with the communities in which they practice. The health workforce education should be both community-based and community engaged to account for community dimensions of health and health care. So community-oriented primary health care is one of the way forward to deliver these things. So the health system Sri Lanka is considered the highly successful low cost model. It is widely accessible as services offered by the public health care system are free at the point of delivery. Other factors like white coverage and female literacy have resulted in remarkable health indicators in the country. In Sri Lanka, primary care, care services are delivered by both state and private sectors. So 
the state sector is through medical officers of health, divisional hospitals, primary care medical units, and OPDs of base hospital, base general, and teaching hospital. The private sector is through part-time and full-time general practitioners and OPDs of private hospitals. In addition to considerable proportion of services are provided by other non-governmental actors when allopathy medicine was introduced to the country, hospitals were set up by the missionaries. In Northern Ceylon, the American missionaries established the Green Memorial Hospital and later successful non-profit making healthcare initiatives like cooperative hospitals in Mulai and Thalipalai played considerable role in providing healthcare services. Community-based medical education in the Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan context, and in Jaffna. In Sri Lanka, community-based medical education is generally taught under two disciplines, community medicine or public health and family medicine. All the older medical schools in the country have introduced community medicine into the undergraduate medical curriculum. The first department of public health was established at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Ceylon in 1949. All the medical faculties country have since in established a separate department to teach community medicine. Community medicine is a generally taught in the third and fourth year of the medical curriculum. In 1995, the University of Colombo introduced the integrated student-centered and community-oriented curriculum which included early exposure in community learning environments. The Faculty of Medicine at the University of Jaffna introduced innovative features within the traditional discipline-based curriculum. The community-oriented teaching program of the Faculty of Medicine, Jaffna, spans from first year to final year and is integrated with the clinical discipline. The delivery of community medicine at Jaffna consists of several components. Since the early days under the leadership of Prof. Sivayana Sundram and Dr. Sivaraja, the department has included a range of community-oriented activities. Although these family practitioners have been practicing in the country for more than 150 years, Sri Lanka medical schools incorporated family medicine into the medical curriculum only in the early 80s. Today, almost all medical faculties across the country include family medicine in their curricula. Family medicine aims to provide high quality primary health care based on the principles of first contact, comprehensiveness, coordination, and personalized care. If family medicine was introduced to the curricula of the Faculty of Medicine, Jaffna in 2010, and offers by the Department of Community and Family Medicine and has developed over the year through the introduction of community-oriented primary care. Community-oriented primary care aims to integrate primary care and public health and is organized and delivered to provide care based on the needs of a defined population. The ultimate goal is to advance health by contributing primary care and population health. The Nallur Emoch area, which is the university project area, has defined population served by the community-oriented primary care model with the support of the provincial health authority. Divisional Hospital Pondaville was converted to a model primary care center with required facilities and resources. Today, the Family Health Center in Pondaville provides opportunities for the students to learn community-based medical education in well-developed multidisciplinary care center.
So health system in Sri Lanka currently under pressure from the high burden of non-communicable diseases and increasing the elderly care needs. So in this context and the delivery of the community-based medical education, the study was carried out with this comparison of community-based medical education delivered at the Faculty of Medicine Jaffna and the medical school in the United Kingdom. The collaborative study was carried out, academic of Faculty of Medicine Jaffna and the Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry of Queen Mary University of London created through a merger of two of the oldest medical schools in London. The research is published in Journal of Sri Lankan Family Physician. So data were collected in the later part of 2017 and early part of 2018 of the teachers from two institutions who were invited to participate, 50 from BADS and 22 from University of Jaffna, expressed their willingness and responded. So the study found the Sri Lankan community-based teaching consists of community public health public health or community medicine teaching and family medicine teaching in the United Kingdom and in most high income countries, a major component of community-based education involve family medicine or primary care based teaching. The curriculum of Faculty of Medicine Union Jeffna offered a few hours of lectures in family medicine and four week clinical clerkship attachment in the third and fourth year. On the other hand, the curriculum of BARTS provide community-based medical education from year one to year five. The teaching was conducted mainly in GP settings, general practice and settings. Majority of the participants from BARTS were general practitioners, while Faculty of Medicine had only one family medicine specialist as a participant. The teachers of Faculty of Medicine had fewer years of experience in both teaching and following their practice than their BARTS counterparts. Family medicine training in Western countries, especially in the UK, is for a prolonged period and thus produce more trainers for the teaching of family medicine at the undergraduate level. Development at Faculty of Medicine was affected by the protracted civil conflict, which ended in 2009, the end of the war Pave the way to develop the institution in the region. And then the delivery of the teaching, we look at the delivered multiple settings, including lecture, course, tutorial settings, public health settings, community health professional settings, medical administrative settings, and social and rehabilitation settings. The settings are varied comparison to the BARTS, which predominantly uses general practice and setting. Expanding the use of GP setting is one of the critical features of delivering community-based medical education, as mentioned earlier. Considering the difficulties associated with establishing more family medicine teaching settings in the region, Faculty of Medicine University has adopted model of community-oriented primary care, which helps to integrate family medicine teaching in the community setting. While working with the existing model, Faculty of Medicine has taken the necessary measures to increase the number of settings to teach family medicine for undergraduate students. The expansion of good quality family medicine coaching greatly depends on the availability of qualified trainers and training centers. Establishing more high quality centers or community oriented primary care in the region is one of one way to improve the quality of family medicine teaching at Faculty of Medicine, University of Jaffna. So another notable finding in this study the teachers use a higher proportion of domiciliary settings 
for community based teaching at the bar center london but the yeah, family medicine for university jeff now had a minimum interaction so opportunities for this form of medical practice are available through understand in low and middle income countries could prove useful in handling health issues faced by the elderly population considering the aging population in sri lanka doctoral care services are very much needed and should be included in the undergraduate curriculum this kind of exposure will help future doctors understand the benefits of doctoral care the family medicine curriculum at faculty of medicine has introduced home visits with the support of community volunteers providing an opportunity for medical undergraduates to understand the benefits so the study really highlighted and concluded that the two institutions differed and adopted more general practice oriented thing at the bars and the faculty of medicine effect, uh, adopted the community oriented medical say learning setting the study also highlighted the need for human resources to deliver high quality community based medical education at faculty of medicine university of now so human resource for the health and urgent need the enjoyment of highest attainable standard of healthcare depend on the availability accessibility and quality of healthcare among the uh, cost of other health determinants following trends are likely to shape the evolution of healthcare system in the country in coming years we will expect more patients more technology more information the patient as the ultimate consumer development of different delivery models innovation driven by competition increasing costs increasing numbers of uninsured and less pay for providers and the continued need for new healthcare system so following decades of under investment in primary healthcare despite a free health service with wide coverage there is a dearth of primary healthcare facilities and shortage of primary healthcare workers in sri lanka data on utilization of primary healthcare in sri lanka in sparse especially in northern province which has been affected by protracted civil war for more than 30 years contributing to severe shortage of health workforce in primary healthcare settings so another study was carried out to see the utilization of primary health care services in the primary care institutions of northern province as part of the integrating mental health into primary care for conflict affected internal forced migrants in northern sri lanka the compcap study the five year study with the collaboration of anglia ruskin university uk funded by the center for disease control and prevention atlanta usa year 2016 and 17 the study findings were published recently in the journal frontiers in health service frontiers in health service the results of this study indicated that the majority of those who seek primary health care service in the northern province are from rural areas old adults the majority of the participants who sought outpatient service attend regional hospitals and so general medical doctor for assessment diagnosis and medical conditional or drug prescription although the healthcare is free at point of delivery in this study participants reported that they increase is they incurred expenses possibly on with investigations and drugs so primary health care in the northern province and other areas of sri lanka is affected by the unequal distribution of resources for primary health care services intensified or some prospecting concerns limited quality of care due to poor resource 
so human and equipment lack of uh, referral gate the referral and gatekeeping system to filter access to specialized services unavailability of personalized medical records absence of the package of services inadequate services for rehabilitation and palliative care are the more major hindering issues so with the considering to the demographic and epidemiological transition palliative care also another important thing to be considered as a element of care which need to be strengthened with the development of primary health care palliative care should be delivered at three levels hospital community and at home ministry of health sri lanka adopted a policy on palliative care 2019 the department of health northern province has also introduced innovative care services with the support of non governmental organizations like can uk can sri lanka mho canada and two world cancer collaboration canada so in these kind of challenges healthcare alone will not help to improve the health of the people so as faculty of medicine we have the responsibility to teach the students to understand the social determinants of the health so why these people are becoming ill then how we can address this so social determinants are important not only because they are major contributors to the health but also the principal cause of health inequity inequities or unfair and avoidable differences in health status in our society so one of the most important lessons the pandemic has taught us is the consequences of neglecting our health system there is a global need to strengthen the public health services to handle pandemic efficiently step must also be taken to address the multi multi distribution of healthcare workers so who has mentioned these are the 10 elements to be considered when we want to strengthen the healthcare system in 2021 after this pandemic so delivering community based medical education the medical education emeritus howard medical school emeritus professor howard medical school that uh, george tabelt daniel perman professor medicine and medical education emeritus howard medical school predicted that what will happen in us medical education so interprofessional education to better prepare health pro professions for future collaborative practice so longitudinal integrated clinical education that is more patient community and chronic disease oriented education in the social determinants of health and social and humanistic mission of health profession more emphasis on continuous education for lifelong learning and long term well being of health professionals a shift to competency based time variable health profession education to better fulfill our so social co contract and produce a most competent practitioners most efficiently the integration of artificial intelligence and new educational and informative technology into the continuum of health professional education and practice so these are the expected changes anticipated the medical education is in us and also need to consider technological innovation that can change the transforming the healthcare delivery in near future so these are the 10 things and artificial intelligence virtual reality augmented reality healthcare trackers medical tricorders genomic sequences revolutionizing drug development nanotechnology robotics 3d printing all these things we need to consider when we are developing future curriculums but when we are working on this 
But at the moment, what is happening in the healthcare, as I already indicated, we are having fragmented care. Patients with multiple and more complex chronic diseases are best served by healthcare that is continuous and integrated. But today care remains too fragmented. And then slow division. Advances in biomedical and behavioral sciences are potentially life-saving, but their diffusion throughout the practice environment is slow and incomplete. Disruptive technology, electronic health records, all promise for improving the efficiency, safety, and precision of care, but their design clashes with existing systems of work causing tension that is contributing to dangerous upswing in burnout among health professionals. And ineffective collaborative collaboration, the healthcare professionals in many disciplines routinely earn advanced degrees and gain expertise in areas such as functional assessment, rehabilitation, sciences and therapeutics, management equal or surpassing physicians. While the healthcare system faces many challenges, the delivery of health profession education also faces a lot of challenges, particularly in Sri Lanka. One is information explosion, substantial expansion of content relevant to the practice of medicine, pharmacy, nursing, and other health profession causes concern about curricula that are too dense at every stage of formal education. And discontinuity in education. Optimal learning requires stable longitudinal assignments that enable professionals and patients to build relationships over time. But monthly block rotations, work hours restrictions, certain length of stay, and shift from inpatient to outpatient care without an accompanying shift in educational venues have led to fragmentation and lack of continuity for both caring and learning. Financial issues. Sri Lankan students are fortunate to have free education, which reduces their financial burden of financial burden, ever increasing living costs and the unexpected delays in completing the courses are causing significant stress and impacting career choices. Faculty burnout, minimum number of faculty under intense pressure to maximize productivity. Faculty members has less time to spend teaching and assessing learners. The time pressure environment lowers the time spent on observation, assessment, and coaching of learners, increasing the risk of failing to identify those who need more support to achieve satisfactory performance and limits of opportunities for achieving excellence among the learners. Challenges in assessment, the health professional certification and licensing assessment should be aligned with the educational goals. There is a need for robust assessment of critical competencies, such as clinical skills, communication, professionalism, and ethics. These are challenged by the restrictions in the resources included, including financial provision. Marginalization of patients. Despite the importance of patient centeredness as a critical element of healthcare quality, Patients rarely have the opportunity to contribute to the assessment of health professions students. Inadequate faculty development. In most instances, the faculty development plans are limited, post, limited to postgraduate. It is necessary to have a well-supported system for continuing education, professional development, and maintaining certification. Social needs for high quality care will be better met when health professionals' competencies are assessed and verified they enter their profession. 
and the continuous assessment throughout their careers. This will be advance our profession abilities to fulfill our social contract. Educational institutions may find the participation in competency-based time-variable education programs creates more satisfaction for faculty as they see the benefits of assuming the role of focus on the longitudinal support and coaching of young health professionals rather than episodic responsibility of judging students. So technology and the medical education Technology is changing in every aspect, every aspect of our lives. Health profession education has been slow in adopting new technologies, but the pace, but that pace too has now accelerated. There are now many technologies embedded in our educational system that have improved efficiency and pedagogy and have helped to accomplish other educational goals. Simulation has provided safe and controllable settings for skill development, learning, clinical reasoning, and developing communication and teamwork skills. It also has been a powerful tool for promoting interprofessional education. Online learning has provided efficient means for knowledge, acquisition so that student faculty time can be more productively spent in higher level function of interpretation, reasoning, and team skills. So computerized models have largely replaced cadavers for learning anatomy and computerized images have largely replaced microscopes in the classroom. A synchronous Interactive learning has helped to resolve some of the logistical problems and with distributed models of education and training at multiple sites. Finally, the end pandemic has shown very clearly the increasing role the technology will play in education and care work. Most healthcare professional schools went to entire online learning and that is likely to continue in some fashions into the next academic year. In the clinics, a high percentage of visits have become telemedicine visits, especially in developed countries, high income countries. This enforced rapid task Transition in both these domains is likely to lead to rapid improvement in an acceptance of these technologies and expect some of these changes will be permanent. The COVID-19 and the trends first we clear that enormous stress placed on our healthcare delivery and public health systems could not have been dealt with without a collaborative and interprofessional approach. The daily heroic stories and frontline health workers have stressed the inter interdependence of the team. If we ever had any doubt that we are preparing healthcare workers of the future to work in teams, the COVID-19 story has put that doubt to trust. Second, the challenges faced in hospital-based education during the pandemic need to be considered thoughtful. The pandemic has also highlighted the importance of the social determinants of health because of the striking differences in outcome based on ethnicity, economic status, and place of residence. The relationship between social factors housing, job, transportation, air quality, access to care and health outcomes has never been clearer at the stacker.
the importance of environment in which we work and learn and the importance of focusing on our health professionals long term well being and resilience have also been drawn in sharp relief by the pandemic so we are reaching the last part of the oration so based on the changing need innovative care services services has been implemented the collaboration with the ministry of health especially that northern province the department of community and family medicine has built up a collaboration global af team university of jaffna with the support of university of birmingham the university of liverpool with the funding support of national institute of health research uk they and also the group research group from intensive care surveillance macdonnell oxford research unit to establish 10000 population cohort in the northern province has op opened up opportunities to improve the quality of health services by adapting modern telemedicine services through helplines and sustainable care pathways further such collaboration collaborators have helped to develop the health professionals team to work in the community settings the journey has started we need to go long way and need to need a lot of support to provide world class community based medical education but we need blood sweat and tears to make it conclusion the health and social issues are transitioning in new directions the complexity of the health system has reached its peak rapidly developing technology and other factors are modifying the role of the healthcare workers the current demand for community based healthcare the need for appropriate community based education in the training of healthcare professionals are identified the medical curriculum also need to consider these changes and change of the delivery mode when planning community based education the challenging forecasted and should be able to overcome by adapting modern technologies and innovative methods significant training in providing medical education will help to ensure the delivery of expected training so we have to work today to face future challenges so i would like to acknowledge the late professor vinayana sundaram who was one of the pillars of the university of afna i also thank to my teacher and mentor of late dr sivaraja who supported me in many ways to deliver the field of community based medical education i am also grateful to prof b arasaratnam former vice chancellor university of afna for continuous support and input in development of community based medical education at the faculty of medicine i also thank dr kishor pal and for his support for the development of the community and family medicine my sincere thanks go to prof and dr c nachanakani and for their continuous support and guidance for several aspects of my professional and academic career i am grateful to professor s sukumaraja vice chancellor and professor s raviraj former dean faculty of medicine for encouraging me to deliver the oration i think since the time to go to the academic colleagues and the staff of the department of community and family medicine faculty of medicine for their tireless support extending toward my journey in community based medical education i also thank my international collaborators 
where I mentioned in this presentation, Prof. Greg Leaf, Professor Neil Thomas from University of Birmingham, Professor Nisandra Kumar, University of Birmingham, and Dr. Rashan Kanifan, Dr. Abigail Ibn, Dr. Anne Aubrey from Barts and the London School of Medicine, Dr. Dorothy Senan from Anglia Ruskin University, and late Professor Chesma Srivatana from the London School of Tropical Medicine, and Dr. Pulo Nadanen, Dr. Raja Sundaram, Dr. Sri Sala Navaratnam from Cancer Care Manitoba for their support to develop this community-based medical education. Also, thanks to the senior assistant registrar and staff of the dean office for the Faculty of Medicine for their support and to deliver this oration. I also thank the family members of late Professor Ishmael Sundram for their kind permission to hold the oration. Finally, I would like to thank my friends and family members, especially my wife and children who traveled with me and supported me wholeheartedly in my achievements. I also thank all the colleagues who have joined here to listen to this physically and also through uh, Zoom all over the world, uh, irrespective of the time difference, and also circulated and supported my oration in various forums to make this. Finally, I thank all of you be here. Thank you.